Congenital anaesthetic is obviously where you're, you're, you're put to sleep for the surgery. Uh, classically, the surgery can be performed with a general anaesthetic, and obviously that means that you won't be aware of the surgery being performed. Unfortunately, Medicare has restricted the people that are covered for labiaplasty, and that means that it's, except for extreme cases, and by that I mean you've got to have eight centimetres of tissue extending between, up beyond the ectroitus, which practically means that even very deserving patients won't qualify for Medicare and therefore private health fund rebates. That means that the cost has increased for performing the surgery. Um, and for that reason, in order to reduce the cost, I've actually evolved into performing the surgery increasingly under local anaesthetic. Now, that sounds uh, barbaric, um, but if the an, local anaesthetic is delivered by someone with experience, there are a few techniques that you can use that mean that actually, I've, I've spoken to patients about this after the surgery, and most of them find that it's actually much less painful than they would have thought. Uh, in fact, most patients find that the actual induction of the, the infiltration of the local anaesthetic uh, is less of a problem than actually being awake while the surgery is performed and having the you know, slight embarrassment of um, having their body parts on show whilst they're awake. The techniques we use to minimise the risk is that we warm the local anaesthetic, we use a very small needle, we infiltrate a small bleb to make that area numb, and then you infiltrate through the bit that's already numb. Um, you give it plenty of time to work, you make sure that it's effective before it's employed. Um, it's only something I've started doing over the last 12 months and again patient feedback is that it's surprisingly well tolerated and it does reduce the cost of the operation by many thousands of dollars.